all right everyone back again with another example on reviewing our functions so i have up here three functions that we're going to go through and this example is going to focus on trying to find the domain of a function so remember that domain is the input or input values that can be used with a function so that it provides an output so a number is not in the domain if when we plug it into the function it would provide us with no answer so looking at the first function here um i usually will start by thinking of oh i can plug in any number but i want to specifically whittle that down and target well what numbers would cause an error what numbers would not allow me to get an answer so when i look here i know that there's a certain thing with division that we can never divide by zero. So I'm going to write that here. So we can never divide by zero. So we know that from algebra one, because then that would mean that it's undefined. So whenever I see a problem that's involving division, um, I know that I don't want zero to ever show up at the bottom. So what number could I use? that would make that happen so i know that if i were to use seven that that would cause the denominator to be zero and therefore undefined so that's going to now allow me to refine my domain so the domain for this problem would be okay i can use any number except for seven so i could say it a number of different ways i can state my domain by writing in words so i can say all real numbers except zero so that's one way to say it i could also say it using interval notation so you might remember that if we don't want to include zero another way to say the same statement would mean uh, for us to write something like this this means exactly the same thing as up here so this is saying that we would go from negative infinity all the way up to seven but not including seven that's what the parentheses mean um, and then after seven so starting from seven but again not including it and going all the way to infinity so this would mean everything except for seven so this means exactly the same thing as up here now the other way i could also state it would be to just write it as a mathematical statement and I could also say all real numbers where and I have to use the variable that we're using where a cannot equal 7 all three of these mean the same exact thing so when you're stating the domain it's totally up to you how you want to say the answer whatever you feel more comfortable doing However, you should understand what all three of these mean. So if I give you the domain in this term, that you understand what that means. Now, when you write it yourself, you can write it however you want, but you should understand what all of the other ways are saying. Okay, so I'm gonna start making like a little checklist down here of things that we wanna look for. So, any, so first type of function that might lead to us restricting the domain would be a division problem so i'm going to check for division if i'm dividing i know i can't divide by zero so what would make a denominator zero so that's so we're done with this first one now i move to the second one okay i have a square root involved well i know that there's limitations when it comes to square roots so again i'm looking for what things would cause the function to break? What things, what numbers that if I were to plug it in is going to make this not work? So I know that with square roots, I can never have a negative inside a square root. Or let's generalize that even more i can never have a negative inside of an even root so if it were, this were the fourth root or a sixth root or an eighth root 
I can't ever have a negative number under there because then that would cause an imaginary number. And you should remember all about imaginary numbers from Algebra 2 last year. So I don't want this in here to be negative. So I want to make sure that this expression t squared minus 5 is always greater than 0. Or sorry, greater than or equal to 0. Because we can have 0 in the radical. Square root of 0 is 0. We just can't have a negative. We want to make sure that it's always positive and 0. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and solve. So we get t squared is greater than or equal to 5. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get two types of answers. So t has to be greater than or equal to square root of 5. But remember, and this is again us reviewing our algebra, that when we take a square root, there are two answers. There's a positive, and then there's a negative. So when we do the negative, that's going to cause this inequality to flip. So t either has to be greater than or equal to the square root of 5, or it has to be less than or equal to the negative square root of 5. So again, if I'm writing the domain, let me scroll this down a little bit. So if I'm writing the domain, let's write it the three different ways. So the easiest way, I think, for most people when they're first doing this is to write it in words. So we would say all real numbers such that t and you can use the math symbols so you can say oh where t has to be greater than uh, square root of 5 or t has to be less than or equal to negative square root of 5 so there's my domain so I wrote it in words now how about writing it in interval notation okay so how would I write this in interval notation so t is less than or equal to negative square root of 5. So that means we're going to go from negative infinity up to negative square root of 5. And then we're going to stop. Now, I put up parentheses here. That's wrong. I should be putting as a bracket. So again, remember that when we have that equals on an inequality, that means bracket. And, so sorry, or not and, but or. And now the other one. So the other one is what? It has to be greater than the square root of 5. So square root of 5, comma, infinity. So infinities never take the bracket. So remember that they take is a parentheses because infinity is not a number. We can never get to or touch infinity because it will just continue on forever. So this is another way to give your answer. And then finally, the short way, which is our, what we would call our... Um, math speak kind of uh, form would say, okay, all real numbers, and now I'm going to use this bar. This means such that t is greater than or equal to square root of 5, or t is less than or equal to negative square root of 5. Oops, forgot to put the square root there. So that. So again, all three of these are the same. Which one you want to write, totally up to you. But again, you should understand what all three of them mean if you should see them in a problem somewhere else. Okay? Now, let's look at our third example. So actually, sorry, let me flesh out. So again, another thing I need to worry about when I'm looking at functions, anything involving, I'm just going to say in total, radicals. And specifically, even roots. The odd roots we don't have to worry about. So like a cube root, a fifth root, etc. we don't have to worry about those because those can take in negative numbers. It's the even roots that we have to worry about. So, so far, these are the two main things. Uh, when I, If I see that happening in a function, I got to, you know, put on the brakes and check to see what would cause an error. So now we get to our last one here, and this one has both things happening. Okay, so I did this for a reason. 
because now I'm dealing with both the things occurring. So first I know I got division happening, so I wanna make sure I address that. So I know the denominator cannot be zero, okay? So I can already see from this that t can't be equal to one. t is one, the numerator is fine, but the denominator is gonna mess me up, okay? Now, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote t. I made a mistake here when I wrote the function. Let me go back here. I was looking like this one. This should have said z. So let me fix that, and that all fix this. So it's z is not equal to one. So already I, I took care of that. Now in the numerator, I see a radical. Okay, I can't have negatives in the radical. This one's gonna be easy. Z has to be greater than or equal to zero. Because if it were less than zero, I'm gonna have a negative in the radical and then that's gonna mess it up. This negative two or this minus two is outside of the radical. It's not inside. So really the only thing mess, uh, causing issues with the square root is gonna be that Z. So I got these two things. So if we picture this on a number line, because I want to try to come up with a one cohesive statement, this is our number line for z. z has to be, so here's zero, z has to be greater than or equal to zero, but z cannot equal one. So I would put that little hole in the graph. So hopefully this is coming back to you from algebra two when you had to do shading in of the line to show solution sets okay so this is what my answer would be so again domain i'm going to write it three different ways so i'm going to write it in words so it would say all real numbers such that z is greater than or equal to zero and z cannot equal to one okay so pretty straightforward now the other way to write it so now in the interval notation i see i would start at zero so i'm going to put a bracket because i do include the zero because it's equal to and then i'm going to go up to one but i stop and i don't include the one so i put a parentheses and I'm talking not, not and, but or, sorry, or. This is the symbol for or, the union symbol. Um, we again pick up from one, again, not including it, and then we keep going towards infinity. So this is the other way to write it without using words. So this is what we would call our interval notation. And then this is just or verbal notation or word notation. Okay, again, both of them are acceptable. It's up to you how you wanna do it. But sometimes in a problem, when they give you the problem, they might give you the domain already like this, you shouldn't understand what that means. All right, so that does it for this example here where we are looking at how to find the domain of a function. So we did three examples here.